Hi everyone, my name is Adam. Welcome to part 2 of my video series on creating a flight controller using X-Plane and LabVIEW. In this video we're going to take a look at how to package up our output data into the appropriate UDP packet format and then send that data back into X-Plane. Let's get started. In order to send data back to X-Plane, we're going to need to set up a, another UDP connection to go in the opposite direction, so a transmit connection. So we go back into data communications, protocols, UDP. Once again, go UDP open. This time we'll do a UDP write. UDP close on the outside again. Error handler. Once again, pipe all the errors straight through. Pipe the connection ID through. We need to provide a we only need to provide a port to the open command. And that's just a port that's unique to us, doesn't correspond to anything in X-Plane. Uh, then we need to provide a string constant out here. need to turn, provide an IP address into the UDP write command and that actually lives under TCP string to IP and we pipe that into the address and port which we connect in there. Right, so going back to the data that we were receiving, we receive a string in from X-Plane. It has the five character uh, starting sequence which we're just going to append manually. So we're going to make a string constant, which is going to be data. And when we're sending this back to X-Plane, we can set that index byte just to be zero. Uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to take the second half of this array. So this, oh sorry, the first half of the array. So at the moment we've got the first half is control surface deflections, the second half is, is pitch roll and heading, so we don't need to send pitch roll and heading back to explain, we just want to send back control surface deflections. So we're going to take the first half of this array, change some values, um, and then send it back to explain. In fact, the only thing we really need is the very first bit, the index, the index number. So we can take that off. Go array, index array. Take element zero, which will be the first bit, which will be the index for this this row of data, and then we're going to take another array over here. We're going to build an array, and this can be an array of nine elements. The 
first element is going to be this first element. The second element is going to be our elevator deflection. So we'll we'll grab that in the in a minute. And then all the other values we're going to set to negative nine nine nine. So I'll go and connect all these up and then come back. Okay, so we've fed minus nine oh nine into all the elements except for element element one here. And for the moment what we'll do is we'll create a control that we can feed in whatever value we want. So um, just create a control here. Numeric control, say Minus one through to one, which is the the range of our elevator deflection. I'll talk about that more in a moment. So we now have this control, which we'll call elevator, and we'll feed elevator into that second element. Right, so now we've got all the values that we want in our array and we have to turn them back into a string because that's how the UDP send function wants to receive that data. Uh, so string flatten flatten to string. Feed in the data. We tell it we don't want to prepend the string size. And we tell it we want it in native byte order again. Now that string and this string need to both get added together. So we can do that again. Concatenate. Hopefully now we've created a string that explain will accept. So let's let's try that, shall we, and see what happens. Okay, explains slightly confused. Okay, resolved that minor issue. Um, so an important thing to check when you're sending these strings back to explain is that all the data that you're feeding into it is single precision floats so by default these sliders come in as double precision um, controls and then what will happen is this whole array will then become a double precision array and all the float single precision values that we feed into it will just get um, converted to doubles and then our 
string becomes much longer than it should be and basically we we overwrite data values in xplane that we shouldn't and in that particular case it seemed to quite reliably make time go backwards so that didn't work so good so now that I've fixed that we've got the VI running here and what you can see on the left is the aircraft sitting there on the runway and on the right hand side I've got this elevator slider and as I move the slider the elevator moves up and down as we'd expect. So earlier I mentioned the the range of control surface motion in X-Plane so the actual the physical range of motion in degrees is specified in the plane model itself and so that's fixed we can't we can't change that and then the control surface deflection we specify here is is just a ratio of that and so it always ranges from minus one to one uh, so minus one you know looks like about 45 degrees but that's you know and one is about plus 45 but we don't we don't know what that angle is and that's it's it's not super important um, for what we're doing it, it would just change the gains if you were working in actual angle um, so now that we've got that we're both reading data from explain and we're writing data to explain um, so if if I wanted I can um, manually apply some flaps and some throttle and we can see if we can try and have some rudimentary pitch control just manually over the aircraft. Now X-Plane loves to yaw really heavily under acceleration and because I have no other controls other than what you see in front of me there's not much I can do about it at the moment. But what you can see can't see particularly well is that I do have control over pitch using our slider and you can see the pitch being reported on our graph so I've got no ro roll control no your control so this isn't going to last for long um, but you get the basic idea so I'll let that crash we'll reset it and we'll stop this and we'll see if we can turn this from being manual control into some sort of rudimentary control system. I hope you enjoyed this video. Click on the links to part 3 to see how we go about creating a basic closed loop control system. If you have any questions, comments or feedback, please post in the comments section below. And if you found this video interesting or informative and would like to see more videos like it in future, please like and subscribe.